It's time for health tips. Now here's your host, Dr. Alma Jenkins. Good evening. I'm Dr. Alma Jenkins, and this is Health Tips. Thank you so much for watching. And what are we going to do tonight? Well, we are going to talk about breast cancer because it is October. And you know, I thought about it. Here it is October, and we haven't said a word to you about breast cancer. So forgive us if we don't do what we may have said last week that we would do this week because I decided we needed to get something in on breast cancer. So I hope that you uh, are tuned to hear about breast cancer right now. And I hope that many of you women out there have already had your mammograms uh, by this time in the year, if it's your year to have it done, if it's your uh, time to have it done. And some of you get it done on your birthday, so there's still time uh, this year to get your, bre uh, your breast cancer uh, preventive test, which would be a mammogram, okay? So before we get started with that, I want to say a little bit about uh, coming to your organization or your church and talking to you about a health topic. We'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to drop us a line and let us know what you think of the show. Uh, if there's something that you'd rather hear about or you've been wanting us to talk about, just let us know. We'd love to respond to your wishes. Because after all, we do what we think you may want to hear, but there may be other topics that you're thinking about. So we always love to hear from you. And then please feel free to send us some healthy recipes. Remember I mentioned that we would love to hear from you with a recipe that you like. We may want to invite you onto the show to fix it for us, or we may just fix your dish, and of course we'll give you the credit for the dish. So let's get on with our discussion of breast cancer. You know. This is a very serious topic uh, because when you look at the statistics for breast cancer, it's sobering. One in eight women in this country uh, will likely get breast cancer in her lifetime, invasive breast cancer in her lifetime. So that means if you're in a room with almost 20 people, at least two of those people are probably going to get breast cancer. So, you know, two out of 16 uh, are very likely to get breast cancer. And that is uh, an amazing uh, statistic. But the other statistics are even more sobering. Excuse me. Um, in 2016, this year, an estimated 246,000 new cases of invasive breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed. That's a lot of people. You know, you're talking about almost 200, and, almost 250,000 women who are going to be diagnosed with breast cancer this year. And there will be 61,000 new cases of non-invasive breast cancer. So the 246,000 are the invasive breast cancer patients that are expected. And then the 61,000 are those breast cancers that are in situ or stage one you know, those early breast cancers. If you've got to get it, you'd rather be in that group. Uh, because when we say something is in situ, that means it's very contained. So it's, it's something that you can, you know, get rid of and be done with. Now, what about men? You know, men get breast cancer too. But their, their statistics are, of course, not as striking. But in a lifetime, they have a risk of one in a thousand. So out of a thousand men, at least one would be expected to get breast cancer. So we're going to expect about 2,600 new cases of invasive breast cancer in men. And I bet you didn't know that. So that's still a goodly number of people to uh, be diagnosed uh, in a year. But when you think about it in the whole United States, it's certainly less than what we can expect for women, of course. Now, what about the women who are going to die this year from breast cancer? We, we told you the number of women that will be diagnosed this year. But in 2016, we're expected to lose 40,000, 
450 women to breast cancer. 40,000. Though the death rates have been decreasing now since 1989, and that probably has to do with detection and treatment and that sort of thing. So at least it's decreasing, okay? But that's still a lot of women uh, to count on losing pretty much uh, for this year. In African-American women, or, or let me state it another way, in women under 45, breast cancer is more common in African-American women than in white women, meaning that we tend to get it younger uh, in many instances. Uh, and so, you know, that's something to be aware of um, for our African-American population. Now, 5 to 10 percent of breast cancer is linked to a gene mutation. So, you know, just getting it out of the blue where your genes mutate or change and you get breast cancer. In 85% of uh, women with breast cancer, there's no family history. 85% may get it with no family history. So it's kind of interesting, although we tell patients, and it is true, that family history is a, is a real risk factor. So if you have a family history of breast cancer, you're more at risk to get it, there's no question, okay? So let's now look at breast cancer. I found some slides and you know, I, I do periodically go on the internet and try to find uh, slides that depict what I think you need to know about breast cancer. And I wanna make sure that we give credit where credit is due for these slides. So give me just a second and I'm going to get this presentation ready for you, it's from the Mayo Clinic, and you can get on here and look at it yourself, but I wanted to kind of talk you through it and uh, give you some time to really think about it. So um, I hope that you will enjoy it. I really thought it was quite informative uh, and wanted to share it with you. Okay, so let's look at the stages of breast cancer. First, let's make certain that we look at this, the anatomy. It's very explicit here. This is a breast, of course. And you can see the ducts here and um, the various lobules of the breast. Those little channels represent the ducts of the breast. And these are the lymph nodes. You can see how the lymph nodes run, you know, um, sort of linearly and include under the axilla of your arm. This is a lifted up arm and you can see the lymph nodes there, okay? So many of you have heard of stage one breast cancer, but before we get to that, um, let me tell you that the way that, we're gonna talk about the way the cancer is staged so you can kind of understand when you hear that someone is a stage one or a stage two uh, breast cancer, you can know what they're talking about. Your doctor determines your stage of breast cancer based on the amount of breast cancer tissue removed during a mastectomy or lumpectomy and the number of cancer-containing lymph nodes under your arm. Your breast cancer stage takes into account how large your tumor is and whether your cancer has spread beyond your breast. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, the stages of breast cancer. Let's look at slide two. You have uh, stage one breast cancer if any of the following are true. Now here's a person with a little breast cancer mass right here. If the tumor is no more than two centimeters in diameter, that's about the size of a peanut without the shell. The cancer has not spread to the lymph nodes and it hasn't spread outside of your breast. So that encompasses a stage one breast cancer. Stage two breast cancer is larger than a stage one tumor or cancer, but it hasn't spread to a distant part of your body. 
So you can have stage two if one of the following is present. The tumor is two to five centimeters, and that is three-fourths to two inches in diameter. Or, and the cancer may not have spread to your, your lymph nodes. So the cancer may not have spread, and it's that size. Or uh, the tumor may be more than five centimeters or two inches in diameter, but it hasn't spread to your lymph nodes. Okay, so it hasn't spread to the lymph nodes in that case. Or the tumor uh, could be less than two centimeters in diameter, and it has spread to your axillary lymph nodes. So it may have spread right here. Notice that, that, that is a spread. So there are uh, you know, a couple of conditions that it could be stage two. No tumor is found in the breast, but the breast cancer cells are detected in your lymph nodes. So they may not have found anything here, but found it in the axillary lymph nodes. So either of those conditions can make you a stage two breast cancer. Think about that a little bit now. Stage two has to do with size and spread. Okay? Some of you probably know someone who is a stage two. All right, what about stage three? Now, if you have stage three breast cancer known as locally or regionally advanced cancer, your cancer may have spread to the lymph nodes nearest your breast, those located under your arm or by your collarbone, but not to more distant parts of your body. So here's an example of that. The tumor is larger than five centimeters, which would be about two inches, with cancer cells that have spread to your axillary lymph nodes, or the cancer is smaller than five centimeters, but it has spread into nearby lymph nodes and the nodes are growing into each other or the surrounding tissue. So you can see examples of that. Or the tumor is larger than, smaller than five centimeters, and it has spread to the lymph nodes above your collarbone. Okay, so we're still dealing with the lymph nodes in this vicinity. The breast, the, the axillary nodes are the ones near the collarbone. That's stage three. So it's regionally advanced, or some of them are starting to grow together, see, like that. Okay, so that's stage three. And the way we tell the difference is it would be stage 3A or stage 3B, okay? So the further you start going down the line, the more spread there is. Now, of course, stage 4, we haven't quite gotten to that yet. We're just going to stop and talk about now inflammatory breast cancer. Inflammatory breast cancer is a form of cancer. Notice this breast is larger than this one. There's no lump or mass felt, um, but the uh, cancer cells block the lymph vessels in the breast. Uh, and so that causes swelling, redness, and dimpled skin. And this is classified as stage three breast cancer. So if you have inflammatory breast cancer, that is uh, classed as stage three breast cancer, okay? And then finally, there's stage four breast cancer, which is the more advanced form. At this stage, the breast cancer cells have metastasized. They've gone to other areas, may go to the lung, the liver, particularly the liver, often that's the first area. And then maybe the lung. Um, breast cancer most often spreads to bones, brain, liver, and lungs. Bone, brain, liver, and lungs. And some of you know people who have had brain mets um, from breast cancer. So it's, it's, once it gets past the breast and goes into the lymph nodes, then it's free to start spreading into the bloodstream and go to these organs. So these are the classes of breast cancer. Now, we're not going to get into treatment at this point. I really want you to be just aware of breast cancer and the various stages of breast cancer. I want to 
um, encourage you to do a breast cancer exam once a month on your breast. You know, and, and then notice the size of your breast. Notice if there is one breast larger than the other. Uh, notice if your breast looks more dimpled. Notice if your breast is secreting any fluid or, you know, a discharge from your breast. Uh, all of these things, the most important thing is for you to be vigilant and be uh, aware of what's going on with your breast and, and, and doing your exam and picking these lumps up early. Some of you have thick breast tissue and it's very difficult to tell if there's a new lump because your breasts are lumpy, you know, and, and thick fibrous tissue. So that poses another issue, another problem with detection. Clearly, if detection can be done early, you have the best chance for survival. And that's what we're trying to encourage, the best chance for survival. Because you can't, you have no real control over whether you will get breast cancer. However, let me share this with you. Some data suggests that women who exercise, women who are on a lower fat diet, this might help to decrease your risk of breast uh, cancer uh, because the exercise seems to be helpful in decreasing it. Um, and so those are two things we can do something about, you know, exercising and, what, and eating uh, healthily. So, you know, it, it comes back down to that to some degree in terms of helping us live a healthier life all around even with cancer prevention as best we can, or at least decreasing your risk of getting cancer. That brings us to the fact that, you know, obesity is an epidemic now in America. So we have to really work hard to try to combat that. Now we've got maybe about 10 minutes left and we can take that time to do some exercise. I want you to take this exercise seriously because you know what? If we practice exercising four days a week for at least 20 to 30 minutes, we're going to put a, a, a dent in the obesity in this country because it's gonna help us lose weight, right? And that's what we wanna do. We wanna keep our weight down. We want to uh, try and get as near to our uh, ideal body weight as we possibly can. Now I know that you know we're not gonna become little sticks. And if you look at the uh, body mass index, what it suggests that we weigh sometimes is far below what we may even be comfortable trying to get down to. So I tell patients sometimes you, you may even add five or 10 pounds to that and you'll still be looking pretty good usually um, in terms of looking at the uh, BMI. But I do want you to look at it because usually it's not a matter of five or 10 pounds that we're overweight. You know, we're talking many times 20 to 50 pounds that many people, I would probably say almost most people find themselves overweight to that degree. So I want to encourage you to please look at that. I want to encourage you when we do our cooking segments um, that you try to reproduce some of those recipes. I try to bring to you things that are pretty healthy for you to eat. And I'm encouraging you to eat portions. I'm sorry, uh, to eat servings, not portions. A portion is whatever you want to put on your plate. But a serving is the amount that's recommended. And you know, most of us don't eat servings. Um, most of us eat portions because we get what we want. We go to the buffets and we load up because, you know, you're paying that money. But try to look, look at what a serving is. And even if you're not going to do one serving, if you do two servings, that's probably not so bad. Most people do. I would say the average person probably gets three to four servings. I would say just from observation, most people, especially if they're really hungry, they will eat three to four servings of whatever it is, you know. Uh, so if you can stick to two servings even, I would say that's probably an improvement over what most people consume, okay? So let's do a little bit of exercise now with the time that we have. 
I'm going to use uh, some dumbbells this time instead of our cans just because I happen to have it around. These weigh three pounds a piece, but your, your cans from your kitchen are fine, okay? So if you don't have any dumbbells, don't go out and buy any. You can use your cans out of the kitchen, but just make sure you do it, okay? All right, are we ready? And just remember that tonight we talked about breast cancer. Remember that October is breast cancer month. So I um, want you to remember that and remind your friends uh, that it is Breast Cancer Month and hopefully this will trigger them to remember to go ahead and do their breast exam, self-examination. Remind your friends uh, who have not had their mammograms this year, if it's the year for them to have it, to go ahead and get that done, okay? You might just save someone's life, all right? Remember, there will be almost 250,000 new diagnoses of breast cancer this year, this year. Okay, let's put a dent in that. All right, one, two, three, and one, and two, three. I guess what you could say is let's put a dent in the number of people who are going to die from breast cancer. Because if you're going to get it, I mean, you're going to get it, but um, at least we can find it early and we can also decrease our risk because we can do what we're doing right now, okay? And we can try eating more healthily because the data is suggesting that that can decrease your risk. So we want to do everything we can to decrease our risk of getting it. So in that way, I guess it may put a dent. It should put a dent in the actual number that are diagnosed. Okay. All right. And one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, two, three, four, one, and two. Now your arms are gonna start getting a little tired now, okay, because I'm doing three inch bar, uh, dumbbells and it's feeling it, okay? But you know what, it, it's a good tired, you know, you really feel that. So this is a three, the, each one of these are three pound dumbbells, and so I'm lifting a total of six pounds, all right? So let's, let's start some more now. One, two, three, and one. And two, three. You know what this does? It helps to tone up those arms. And you know, if we start doing this now and through the winter, guess what? When the spring comes, you're gonna look buff. You know, you're gonna look toned. And everybody wants to look like that. You know, you're gonna be able to wear cutouts and look at those arms like Michelle Obama. I have a little squeaky chair, so I hope you'll forgive that. <laughs> okay, one. Let's do 20 of these. And one. And two. Three. And four. Five. The chair is singing your song. And six. Seven. And eight. Nine. And ten. And I'm going to let you rest a minute because I know you're tired doing ten straight. Um, you know, so I'm gonna let you get, take a deep breath in, let it out, deep breath in, and out, one, two, three, and one, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, two, three, four. Ah, that's even more than 20, right? Um, we did like 25 or so. And it actually feels good. You know, you'll feel that little fatigue in your arms, but you know, you'll find that it recovers fairly quickly, so you should be fine, all right? And uh, I want you, when this show goes off, to do some more exercise, because we, we really wouldn't have done that much. I want to do a quick review with you of what we talked about in terms of breast cancer, because I want you to remember this. I want you to have uh, some takeaways from this little discussion about breast cancer. So let me just 
say this real quickly. Number one, one in eight women uh, is likely to get breast cancer in her lifetime. So if you're in a room with uh, 16 people, about two of those people are likely to get breast cancer. If you're a male, one in a thousand people, very likely, one in a thousand males, likely to get uh, breast cancer. For women, we're talking probably uh, close to 250,000 uh, new cases uh, likely to be diagnosed this year, okay? And so, you know, we want to uh, make you aware of these statistics so that you make a, a further effort to get yourself checked. For African-American women, many African-American women may get breast cancer 45 and under. Uh, so we have a, a large number of younger women in the African-American population getting breast cancer. And yes, the risk factors for breast cancer include having had previous breast cancer, so you're more at risk to get it again, having a family member with breast cancer. That's why it's so important to know your family history. And I know that sometimes we don't talk about this in our families, but we need to talk about it because it affects every other member in the family. And also we know that there's a gene that you can be tested for with breast cancer. Many of you remember Angelina Jolie who got checked for that and found that she had it and so she went ahead and had prophylactic mastectomy. That is being done as well. That's a very personal choice that you may find yourself needing to make at some point. So I hope you'll remember what we've talked about. Remember that October is Breast Cancer Prevention Month. Tell somebody, remind a friend to get checked. And I just want to thank you for tuning into the show. I'm Dr. Alma Jenkins. Thank you so much for watching.